Hey everyone, it's Cheryl from Tinker's Cart Art. Happy second day of spring. We're going to paint that adorable little sheep painting this afternoon. It's, it's pretty, pretty simple, simple and it's, it's great, great for the whole family. It's so easy to paint, it's so quick, but I thought, I thought it would be fun to paint it together this afternoon. So I'm gonna get started shortly. I'm going to ask who is all ready, who has their design traced on their canvas. Um, I'm, I'm going to freehand it, so, so I'm going to show you a little bit about, um, you don't have to always trace your tracing, tracing on, you can always freehand it a little bit when things have simple shapes and whatnot. So, so say hi when you come on, because, because on my StreamYard platform here, I don't see your names come, come up like I do on my Facebook Live platform, platform. So, so I'd love to see if you're here and where you're from, and if you have any questions at all about our painting today. But I'm going to jump right in. And, and do say hi, because I want to see if you're here. And also, if you are interested in seeing when I go live and do some paintings, on your Facebook page there, if you see on the lower left, there's a little bell. Click on that, and that way you will be notified whenever I'm jumping on live. Sometimes I plan them like today, and other times I just jump on and um, paint some fun things. So anyways, I'm going to hop in, and do remember that you can come back and watch this recording anytime. You do not have to watch it um now or paint now you can stay and chat and ask questions and then you can watch this video anytime later on so and let me know if you can hear me okay this is all a new uh, platform for me and I'm trying to get a better quality for you all so do let me know in the comments if it's if it's okay if you can hear me and see me and whatnot so okay so you can see my canvas is blank yours might have your design traced on it either way i just sketched a few lines i just need to have like a little horizon line so this painting is just a lower horizon line, just a little bit of grass for that sheep to stand on. I just give myself a little line. I'm going to um, probably paint my whole background and then put my sheep on top. But you're welcome to paint around your guy. He's going to be standing me. Well, maybe I'll go around. That might be the way you're going to do it. So I'm going to just give myself an idea of where my little sheep is, the white part of my sheep, the lighter part. We don't have to worry about the sound or the cloud or the flowers, really. We're going to sketch those on or just um, kind of, I'll show you some tricks for that. Hi, Katie. Hi. Stepped into paint. Great. Nice to see you. Thanks for watching. All right. So I'm going to hop right in. And it looks like I have, I'm going to put you on hold for a minute. Look at it. I've got all the colors except for the blue. I'll be right back. So if you have to, just get your pattern trace or a line sketch, and I'll be right back. Sorry about that. I've got, I've got some blue in love. We're waiting for colors to dry. I'll kind of go over what we're using for paint. And what we're if you have any questions, you can throw in. Oh, you get an echo. Yeah, I hear that too, Katie. So let me see if I can change some settings here um, to eliminate that. Let me just take a second. Just to... All right, let me see if that is a little better for you. That... Sorry about that, you guys. I want to see it right side up, so I know too. Okay, okay. Let's see if that see works if that a little better. better. I'm trying all sorts of new techie things as we go because these are sort of all new to me and trying to get techie stuff done. So bear with me and let's just jump in. Okay, so I like to use a bigger brush for my background. I'm going to put my palette there so you can see the colors too. You could use a bristle brush, a white, you know, I like the light, I like the light bristle, bristle, bristle brushes. Hi, Mary Jo. Hi, Mary jo. Let's let's tie. I have an echo. echo. Yeah, I'm not sure what the deal is with that. I think I cleared that up last time, but let me. I'll get going and I'll try to work on that for you. So let's try taking my 
Okay, okay that might help. I turned my uh, volume off there. there. Let's, Let's see, see if that helps. helps. A bigger brush, brush for the background. A, a bristle brush or an acrylic. This is a um, synthetic acrylic, like a one inch flat. And how I do my skies, I pretty much do my skies in all my landscape paintings the same way. I don't really mix up a blue, a solid blue. I like to mix it on the go so that I get some variations and it looks a little more realistic. Of course, today we're doing a whimsical painting. My sky on that is pretty much all one color. Um, hi, Lynn. Yep. I, can you not see me? Can anyone else see me? Let's see. I'm here. It's here. I just take a little bit of blue into my white. And a good way to test your color is because I like to use these gallery wrapped canvases. I start, I start on the edge. edge. That way I can take a look. And if the color is to my liking, I'll keep going. But here's a place where you can just take a little bit of your darker blue or light and adjust it. And always remember your painting doesn't have to look just like mine. If you find a blue bit that you like, you can have a much darker blue, you can have a much lighter blue. You don't have to always strive to be like mine. I like to see them all a little different. So I'm, I'm doing, doing the same thing. thing. As, As I go to load my brush, brush, take a little, little bit of blue into the white. And I'm going to do my edges first. That way they're done. It finishes the painting off. If you'd like, you can still frame it, but you don't really need to. You can pop your painting right on the wall that way if you have your edges finished. And just let me know, like I said, hi, we get quite a few people watching. So just let me know if you're there, where you're watching from. Let me know if I'm going too fast or too slow. And if you have any questions, certainly put them in the comments. I'd be happy to answer them. Okay, okay so, so I've got, got my edges down there. there. We're going to just do our sign now. Like I said, we're not going to worry about the sun or the cloud yet. Take a little bit of blue into some white. I like to use kind of a crisscross, sort of a motion in my brush strokes. Can you see it there? You don't want to do this right back and forth because it'll look like you're painted a wall. This way it gives you a little variation. And like I said, on my sample, it was pretty smooth. You can do a very smooth sky, have it all with one color. But sometimes it's fun to take a little bit of just, just the white paint. And look, you get a little lighter area. That might be a nice place later for a cloud. You can take just some dark and get a little darker area. It gives a little interest and a little variation to your background. Hi, Carl. I'm sorry about that echo. Let me see if I can, uh, as I go, I'm going to try to fix that. I'm not sure what's going on today with the, uh, with the techie stuff. And I'm going to just go around the whole canvas like that now. So if you can just start working you can work from one side to the other, if you'd like, whatever's well, more comfortable. But if you'd like to do this technique and get some dark using some light, how this happens is I'm working fairly quickly, so the paint wherever I'm working is still wet. If I was working at a slow pace and the paint dried as I went, I would not be able to blend as nice as this. So just go into your white or your blue or a little bow, play around, and see how you, what you like your background to look like. So what I'm going to do is I'll quickly put this background in, and I'll let it dry a bit, and I'll try to fix that echo for you while you are working on your background still. Irving, Texas. Yeah, Katie. So, yeah, Katie. Um, so I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. I just I just it on. It on. So maybe so as maybe as you go along, along at some point, sometimes, sometimes just little, little shapes. shapes. I'll always show you. You know, you're, you're always welcome to trace it on, and I give instruction on that on the uh, Facebook page. But, but if, if you'd like, like while, while we're painting, I'll always try to give you some tips if you'd like to try to draw it on yourself. So let me just get it on, and then try to address that issue with the. With, with the echo. echo. I apologize for that. But eventually, one of these times, I'll get everything right. You'll be able to see me. I won't be upside down. You'll be able, You'll be able to hear me correctly. I'm having a little issue with my internet, so I sort of at the last minute switched rooms to recording today. So I am a little off my game, but I appreciate your patience, so thanks. Hi, Debbie. North Dakota. Well, thank you. And I'm a little new at this, too, so please bear with me. And I will get the technical issues um cleared up but if you'd like to look on my page i have a number of other live video classes i also have a youtube channel tinkers card art and all of the free classes are up there as well with links to the sign up page the sign up page simply um creates an automatic email that will go out to you with a supply list and the tracing if, if that's needed for the project so so welcome I'm glad you're here 
Hi, Carla. Okay, yes. All right. Um, can you see how fast I'm going? I really like a, uh, a, a pretty uh, rough and tumble background a lot of times. Even with my grasses, I like to work pretty fast. So again, I'm blending as I go. But I like to see the brush strokes. I like the movement it has. And if I was doing this, I maybe even would just paint the whole sky and then pop my lamp right on top and take a few coats of paint to cover, but that's a way that I work too. So I'm going to let you guys get your background done. Let me know where you're at when you're, at. And you're ready to ready go on. And just, and just let, let me pop this phone off for a minute, and I'm going to try to get rid of that app, okay? So you guys work on that, and I'm going to just, just figure this out. Thanks. All right, I'm not sure, but we'll see if that helps a little bit. I hope it's not too, too bad. You guys are upside down. Hey, let's look at you. Let's see right there. There. Okay. So let me know how it's going with your lamb, um, your background of your lamb, anyways. And what I do is I do my backgrounds. I'll talk a little bit while this is drawing about the way I work and the supplies that I use. And please jump in and give me any um, the questions, questions you have. I usually, I usually always work, regardless of the kind of painting it is, it's from the very back forward. forward. The sky is usually first, and then I look into the, um, the, the uh, foreground. Any little elements that go on top, I'll put one after, and then work right up to some shading, some highlighting, and some little details. As far as what I use for paint, I just use a little ac acrylic craft paint. Sometimes I use the tube acrylic paint. You're welcome to use whatever you have on hand. You're welcome to start with your primary colors and, and mix as we go, and I can help you along with that too. Uh, brushes, I don't spend a lot of money on brushes. I usually use some synthetic. I have, you know, I'll use a wide flat a lot of times, like this three quarter or one inch. Then I use, say, like a 10. Sometimes I like really tiny number two, too, for some little certain things I'll show you. And then I have a few rounds. And they're, like I said, they're not expensive, expensive, but if you take care of them, they're going to last a while for you. You really don't want to leave them sitting in water, and you don't want to leave your hand on them in between your colors. You want to rinse that brush off and dry it off, and they'll really last a long time. If you have some brush with some straight hairs and they're kind of crazy hairdos, running it under some very hot or boiling water will sort of resh reshape that brush again. Even a little soap in there to, re to reshape it while you're um, not painting. And so that's some ideas on brushes. Uh, the acrylic paint, it's sometimes nice, and I know I, I tell you guys this a lot of times, you can use you can use a Sharpie sometimes for some of your detail work. Um, sign your name. If, you, if you're a little uncomfortable with a tiny brush, you can use, certainly use a little Sharpie. I love the Posca paint markers. They come in different sizes. It's a fine and a heavier one, and there's lots of colors. And these guys are fabulous for detail work. Because they have the body, have the body of paint, and when you use them, use them, it's almost got a little bit of a raisin paint um, uh, detail to it. So, anyways, I'm going to jump in and paint my grass. And you can see my background is very different than my sample, but I don't like to paint everything the same way. And I'll show you guys different techniques. So, again, you can paint it very smooth, all in color, mix up your paint. I like to kind of jump in and add some lights and darks. And now for grass, there's lots of greens out there. I have a lot of greens, I have a lot of paint. But what I like the best really is a really true, this isn't a yellow green, and this is just a primary yellow. And when you mix these, they really come out nice. It's a nice green shade, you can get dark light, you can add a little white, you get a little bit more of a mint green, like my background color there. But, but um, and, I, and I'm using the same brush. If I'm going into a darker color, I would use the same brush, maybe without washing it off. I sometimes when you rinse your brush off, you really want to get all that 
water out of the brush. I don't like to go in and have it watercolor looking. I want a nice coverage with these acrylics. So I tend to really dry the brush off when I wash it, or because I'm going from blue into the green, I'm going to use the same brush. And you can see how mixing these two colors, you can get some beautiful greens. And again, I'm going to go on the edge. That way I will see how I like the shape. So I, and then I can adjust it on the fly. I'm going to do the same thing with the grass. I'm going to make some lighter areas and some darker areas. And there we go. Is the echo any better, you guys? Hi, George. How are you today? Happy spring. This is going to be a great week for you to be out on your bike. It's beautiful. So glad it's finally nice. Is it nice for you guys? I'm in New England here in uh, Massachusetts, and we have a gorgeous day today. It's really nice. So you can see I'm doing a crisscrossy stripe similar to what we did on the side. And you can see I can take just the yellow. Well, let me push this over so you can see my pattern too. I'm going to take just some yellow now. And you can see how that's going to blend in, but it's going to leave a nice bright area. I can take just some of the dark phthalo and have some dark areas. And you can, with your brush, leave it as rough and textured and painterly looking as you'd like. Or just keep brushing it with your dry, with your brush, and it will be a nice, smooth, solid color. Oh, Teresa, the echo's really bad. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I'm not sure what's going on with that today. I apologize about that. I hope you can hear me a little bit. This is a pretty quick painting, and I will solve that problem for next time. I had it solved last, and now I have moved room, so I don't know if it has something to do with that. I wanted, I wanted to get near the... Um, the modem so that I wasn't cutting out like we were last time. I promise I'll get better at it. All right. Now, now if, you if you want to play around with your colors, colors and your greens and things, things, just for fun, you could take some white. And you can see how that white is great to add to a color that's a little transparent. It really gets it um, some good coverage. But look at that nice color you've got there. You could add a little blue and it could get a little darker. So have fun. Just this is a great painting to, to, to play around with, experiment. I'm not worrying about a perfect line across here, across there. I, I want it a little uneven. First of all, it would be harder to make a perfect line, and it wouldn't be a perfect line in nature. And it'll give us a way to make some of the grasses popping up from there, here and there. Okay, so you can see I'm just kind of giving it. Getting the, getting the white of the canvas covered. You can go back in now. I usually will just dry my brush off. If you want to go in some other colors, just to, just to add a little bit of interest. Now, a great way, even with the brush this wide and, and um, flat, you can get on the chisel edge, you can get some really fine little grasses. So I'm going to take some of my green and do, this, do that. Just hold my brush up and we get to see straight up and down and look at it. You can get a little bit of grass just by flicking your brush from the bottom of the way the direction the grass grows. I'm almost taking some of my wet paint from here and dragging it up to get those nice little thin blades of grass. Here's the technique is you give a little pressure when you start, but then as you come up, lift that brush right off of the canvas. And you will see without trying, you're going to get some nice little thin grasses. You could very well go back with a little tiny liner brush and do all those if you want, or you can do it on top of these if you want those little finer, a little bit of finer grasses. You can do it any way you want. Even here where I'm not even using paint on my brush, I'm just using the brush. It pulls through the paint and it gives you the illusion of some grasses. So just kind of give it some texture doing that here and there. Any flat brush you could do this sort of technique with. It doesn't have to be a big wide one. It would work. Just as easy with our little number 10 or our number 8. And that just gives it some texture. So you can see that, but if you would like to, you can certainly go back with a little liner brush or a little round and add some detail. So whenever I do add detail, I like to add a little bit of water. I'm going to put this up so you can see what I'm doing here. I add a little few drops of water to my paint to thin it down. Anytime I'm doing detail, I thin the paint down with a little bit of water. So it flows a little more like ink and not as heavy as say paint. And same same kind of stroke. I start 
and work up the direction the grass grows. So I would press down a little bit and then just up and out, lifting that brush off the canvas and just reloading my brush with paint when I need to, but adding a little bit of water each time. And this is as little or as much as you want. This is just a little technique for us. So if you want to um, paint grass any kind of a landscape painting, I'm going to push all this away. There. Okay. So what I do is a few drops of water each time and from the bottom up. So now I'm going to nice dark green on top of that lighter shade. And you can really see how that shows up nicely. So if you need to be showing up really well just like that, or it might be more subtle if you want to put it into an area that's a similar green, you can take a little bit of lighter so i want to take a little bit of my yellow a little more green but i want to add a tad of white and just get a little bit of lighter shade and you'll see how this color will really pop so if you want some little areas that really have little clumps of grass or whatnot you can see how you can do them see how light down this up you can really see what i'm doing here you can just like start bottom always and just give it a curve and up and see how thin and light they are? You can go heavier, you just get a little more pressure. But if you want light, just light, light strokes, lifting it away from you. So it's not like, oh, it's not difficult um, to paint those thin lines. It's a matter of really just pulling your brush off the canvas. If it's hard because it's all wet paint, you can always use, I sometimes use my own brush, and you can't just use this to, uh, use the brush to set your hand, your uh, wrist on. And that way, you can bring your hand down in the paint. Sometimes I do need to rest my hand to get these little thin lines. How is everybody doing so far? Do you get the idea of the grasses there? I'm going to use some lighter greens afterwards too to put the little stems for our daffodils. Now, my sky is dry here. I'm going to show you my technique for that cloud. Because it's a whimsical painting, it's not like I'm trying to make it perfectly uh, realistic. So these are fun, this is a fun little sun and it's a fun little bob. So I like to take, I usually like to use a little bit of a stiffer brush, but any of your brushes that you have, you could use um, your flat if you had, had it or, or a bigger round. The trick is to take just a little of the white paint from that cloud. You don't want to have a whole brush load of heavy paint and do your cloud. It will look like it's sort of stuck on. I take a little bit of white. Take most of that paint off. I'm going to use just a dry brush with a little bit of white on there. And sometimes if you go to your canvas and it's really too light and you don't see it, that's fine. I would rather have that than have a big brush load go on and then it's too heavy. Start very light and build up to the cloud that you want. I do like circular strokes. So I'm going to just do a little circle stroke here. And can you see how very light that is? It's just a tiny bit of paint. Whenever I go to get more white paint, I take a little, a little bit and I wipe some off. And I just do a little bit of series of kind of half circles. That's the shape of my cloud. A big circle in the middle, I'm going to get a little smaller. And you'll see, I'll just keep taking paint. And I'm going to make a little, it's almost like a little ball there now. I'm going to get a little closer so you can see. I took some white paint, dab some off. And it's very light. And we can build it up to be as bright as we want. But I just wanted to get that in there just a little bit. It's a little bit of a cloud. Now you can go a little heavier. But I use the same technique. So don't add a lot of uh, paint on the brush. I take a little bit, take some off. And I may leave a, leave a little heavier stroke this time. But you can see how I can get, mostly on the top, so I'm going to make it a little darker. The bottom, I want to fade back into the background a little bit. I'm just putting one cloud here. If you like, you can put colors wherever you like. It's kind of fun practice. Very light little circular um, brush strokes. See how light that is and how easy I didn't fuss with it or, or, or work too hard. Sometimes if you just kind of have fun with it and, and jump in and play around, you get your best results. If you stress and you get too worked up and try to do it too perfectly, it looks um, like it's overworked. I'd rather have it look fun and, um, and uh, just spontaneous. So... Because this sun is going to be yellow, yellow is so transparent. If I take my yellow paint on here now, it's going to look greenish because of that blue. So I always base, and I'll do the same thing with the daffodils. I'm taking some white, taking some off, and I'm going to do a little base color where that sun is going to be. And my my um, little technique for fun little sun or moon shapes is I simply pop my brush with a little white on it right in the middle. And look at I'm just going to very roughly go out, and that's that. 
What I like about this is it's going to give us a base for the yellow, so it'll pop a little more. And because you use your brush in the beginning, in the middle first, and you go out, all your paint's there. And as you go up further, it's less and less paint on your brush. And you get this nice feathery feather edge, which is really cool. You really want to let that dry first before we go into the yellow, though. So let that dry. And why don't we, you might have sketched on your little um, daffodils. I'm going to just kind of get an idea where I'm going to go. You know, I have one here, here, here. And they're just really kind of circles to start. I'm going to paint white circles so that I get a nice base for the yellow that's going on top. And then we can put the little um, petals on the afterwards. That doesn't have to be covered perfectly. You could do a lot of little ones. You could do a few big ones. You could add some down on grass here if you wish. Whatever you would like to do. Actually, if you love this is kind of plain, might be nice to write across here Happy Spring, which you could easily do with a paint marker if you want to come with the brush. So. Anyways, let me know in the comments if you have questions about anything I'm going over, and let me know how, how you're all doing. And I'm going to let that dry a bit before I go back to yellow. But I'm going to just take one of my... So one of my little flat brushes here, but again, the brushes, if it's important for a particular brush, I'll let you know. But if not, whatever you have that works. All I want to do is get some white circles where my daffodils will be. And I'm going to just paint a little circle. Now remember, I said circle, but it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm not going to worry about it. So I'm going to just do the best I can. And you can vary the sizes. Like I said, you put some down in the grass if you'd like. I think I'm going to be mom left, so that I'm going to do it like a happy spring on there. It's nice to see a little spring weather today. I'm looking forward to spring. I'm sure you guys are too. We've had a long winter. And there we are. So, see how wet those are? I was not being real careful. I basically wanted a little bit of a platform for the yellow to go on afterwards. And now, for my little lamb, I'm going to paint him in white first. And then I take a little bit like an ochre or a flesh or, or a tan color and I put a little texture on his um, um, body with just little spirals. spirals. I do love the spiral shape and I use that a lot. Hi, Michelle. How's your weather in New York there? We're beautiful today. This week looks gorgeous. Thanks for joining. So now you can just use your tracing or you can just freehand your little guy. I am not going to trace him with my brush perfectly. Look, at I'm making little bumps. He's, gonna, he's a fuzzy, woolly little sheep. And so we are going to do this. Give him some texture. Give him some, some fluff. I can't even believe it. Can you all believe that Easter is so close? It's so early this year, boy. I've been trying to get some Easter projects in, and the, the time is just getting away from me. So today we're working on spring, and this will get us right past Easter and right into spring. Or anybody who loves lambs and sheep, it's a fun painting. I think when I was talking about doing this painting online, we decided maybe to put little eyeglasses on. I think that would be kind of fun, little red eyeglasses or something. You can really put a little hat or scarf. Remember, make the painting your own. It's fun to have a starting point with my sample, but I'd love to see what you guys can do with it on your own. There. So that's covered pretty well. If I was doing it without having left that little area for him and just painted blue all over, this would still work. And I'll just maybe do two coats of the white. 56. Yeah, it's about the same here. Exactly. Sunny and beautiful. I actually got out for a walk today. It was so great to finally get out. All right. So while we wait for this to dry, let's give these guys some stems and some leaves. I'm going to get a paper towel here because, like I said, when I rinse my brush off, I really want to dry it off well before I go into my paint. Lots of, you know, lots of paintings and sometimes we want that watercolor technique and we want that water and the translucency, but um, right now I want good coverage. And the acrylic crafting is wonderful, but it doesn't have the best coverage sometimes, so it isn't um, uncommon to have to go to a three coats. So there. I want to do a different kind of green here that's going to show up. So I'm going to add a little more white to that green mixture that we made. So I've got my green here. I'm going to add a little white. And... I'm going to play around and see if you can if you can notice it. If not, we'll just change the color up a little bit. But they're just going to get little stems. And I'm using my chisel edge again. I am not 
worrying these are all going to tip me. It doesn't matter. It's a fun painting. So now, how we do some little leaves? And I'll show you. This is a fun little way to make uh, elements of flowers and things. It's a decorative. It's not like a real leaf, but I kind of just did. Well, on the opposite of what we did for the grasses, I'm going to press down my brush here and then lift it as I go down and get those little leaves. I just thought it was kind of fun on a little whimsical painting like this, kind of a fun shape, and you can do all you want. And I'm going to go over this again. I want a little light just to show off. I've added a little more white and some yellow, and I'm pressing and pulling, pressing and pulling. Let me bring you up to the camera so you can really see that kind of stroke. I'm using my flat on the chisel edge. This would work just the same with a nice round brush. Just press down, pull, and see how I'm lifting that right up off the canvas? That's where you get that nice thin edge. What do we have here? It's like a calm stroke. And then we'll just do this guy. And I think that's just kind of a fun, it's almost like an Alice in Wonderland, kind of a really whimsical, fun kind of Thing. While I have that, because I like that color a lot, and I didn't use it much, I think I'll take some of that and make some little grasses just to kind of bring that color a little scattered through all my painting. It's kind of nice when you find a color or a technique you like. Scatter it. Don't do it everywhere. It'll be too uniform. But just here and there, just to add interest to your painting. Your eye will travel across and, and, and look at these cool little details and then move over here, and it makes for an interesting painter for me painting for the viewer to look at. Okay, I'll show you up close, just so you can see that. There. And the paint's drying pretty well today. Looks like my little sun is dry there. So let's go in and I'll show you how we quickly just add that um, on as well. So now we're going to just take the yellow paint. Just a little bit of yellow. And I always, again, I don't want to take this big brush log and put it there because it's going to be too much. I'd rather do a couple of go around and and build it up. So I've got a little bit of yellow there. I'm going to do it exactly the same way. I'm going to place my brush right in the center, blot it, and just spiral out. And as I go, I'm just going to walk as far as my white went. And if I see too much white to show, I'm just going to touch it up. But can you see how you get that nice little halo look around here? Because your brush had barely any paint on it. And that white underneath made it so our yellow pops and it doesn't have a green look to it. Sometimes, if you would like, when your clouds are done and all dry, if you notice, sometimes you see a little yellow tone to them, so a little sun on them, you're shining through. When you want to add something like that to your cloud, you must wait till your cloud is dry and do it really lightly. There's barely any paint on my brush, and you don't want much, but you just add a little bit of a little yellow in here and there. It just gives it a little bit of um, sunshine there. So that's a cool little tip. But don't do it when you know your blue is wet because then it will turn green and, and when you white so it. I do just a little bit, very dry brush afterwards. So okay, we've got our little lamb there. It's pretty good shape. I'm going to just add a little more white on some of the edges because you can see the blue through a little bit. It's not a big deal at all. It really wouldn't matter. But I'm just going to here and there add a little bit where I can see from, from my view here a little blue showing. So there, that's perfectly fine. We want to do our daffodils yellow now. So we're going to just take some yellow paint. And just like I did you know, with the white, we're just going to paint yellow. And can you see how that really pops now? If we had done that just over the blue, for instance, let's just show you on this. If I did it like just to show you on the edge, can you see it's going to look green? So it's so nice. Don't forget, you can always use your white to under, underpaint something. Just that little extra step and that little moment it takes really makes a difference. Because otherwise, you would put layer after layer of uh, yellow on your blue, and you're still not going to be happy with that greenish tinge to it. So just put fill in your little daffodils with the yellow. And then I'll show you a little decorative details we put. This is not a realistic looking daffodil or flower or painting. This one is whimsical, so we're going to use fun little brush strokes here and there. I'll show you a few things at the end to add on to. If you kind of went into painting your own, you could add some little daisies down here, all sorts of little things. You could add another couple of little sheep in the background if you wanted. Next time, you could do a little bit of canvas. You could do it on a tiny little canvas, a little miniature. That would be really cool. Thanks again, you guys, for joining me on a Sunday afternoon and uh, painting with me.
Like I said, I've been doing pain in nice person for a long time. But because of being shut in, in like most of us, I decided to do some virtual classes. And it's, again, a little new to me. And if you put it with my techniques, so I'll, I'll get it really that more polished. So thank you. All right, we're going to let those dry. His little face and legs are super simple. His ears are super simple. His ears are the same technique we did with the leaves in. So I'm going to get the, flat, the round brush now. So I'm black paint. And his face is kind of like a flat top oval. And then it's fun because I don't want to really sketch it. I like to paint them all, all different. So when I do a little, uh, a little scene of all the little sheep, their little faces are all different because they're all individual. So it's really just a, like a U. And just flatten it across the top. Little curve if you want. I just fill that in with black. That's his little face. His little ears are this simple. Some black paint. And I just do the same stroke as before. Press down and pull it in. And press down. Oh, I'm doing mine a little different than the, than the sample, but this is okay. His ears are down. The sample, I do them up. And it's a little different look, so it's perfectly fine however you want to do them. Legs are super simple, too. Um, and if you're doing it in with freehanding, a little piece of chalk is great to have because I'm going to just freehand his legs on, but you can sketch them in with a little piece of chalk first because it um it just wipes right off. And you, if you didn't like it, you can wipe it off and try again as, as opposed to pencil, which you'd have to erase. Hi. Okay. It is fun to get together and paint. I'm really happy to paint a spring painting today where it's so nice out and springy. So I am just making a little kind of a peg shape for his leg. Um, you could very well have done, you know, just the same shape we've been doing. You could have very well have done, you know, something like a little, like that, like we were painting with the full power paddle shapes. But I'm going to make it more like a little, I'm just going to kind of go wider at the top, a little thinner. I'm just sort of making it up against where the little, the little fleece is there. Afterwards, we can even take and put some little um, grass that's coming up over his legs, which would be fun. And oh look, I got a little black on my I got a little few black dots here from dragging my black paint over. So in case something like that happens, what you can do is just take a clean brush you have handy, dip it in the water, and you can just scooch that right off while it's wet. Probably the best time to do it if it dries and you just touch it up with some blue paint. But look, you can really remove it just with a clean brush and some and some water. So there. It's fun to make mistakes because then I can show you how to fix them. Okay, back legs. How many painted the little uh, painting of the, all of the sheep in the, in the uh, I did a little quick video on Facebook. You can find it if you scroll back. It's the same all sheep in it. And so there were little lying down sheep, standing up sheep, all kinds of sheep. It was really fun. And they're kind of wonky, but that's okay because, like I said, we're doing a musical painting. I'm going to put some little grasses up after over, over their little feet, their little legs. Okay. Um, I think I want his face a little bigger. I'm going to just go and, and just look, step, you know, just look at your, your painting and do it however you would like. He's awful cute, even though he doesn't have any eyes yet. But he will. Maybe glasses. He might put glasses on. His face is getting wider and wider here, but that's okay. Right. Okay. Okay. What do you think? How's he look? He's tall. He's taller than the other one. Taller than the sample. Again, I could have painted the same if I tried. So don't be upset when it doesn't look just like the sample because I couldn't paint it just like the sample again. Okay. So now we'll go back to these little daffodil. What I did for them is I did put a little bit of a um, a little petal, a little bit of petals around there. I'm going to take some of my yellow and I'm going to mix it with some white. So that's a little trick. If you want the paint to be a little more opaque, just add a little white to it. And I'm, and I wouldn't mind if it's a little lighter on the edge, that little um, scarlet edge. I sometimes, of course, have to paint upside down and sideways. Um, so do, do pick up the painting, take it off the easel, take it off, you know, if you're painting flat, whatever you need to. And then I'm just going to go around the edge and Make a little scroll out. 
And you can kind of see that. Just give it a little scroll ditch. We need to put another little code on there. We're going to do some orange and gold too. So just give you a little round flowers, a little pretty lacy scroll at the edge there. He's cute. I think he's cute. I love it. Yes. You could put a little bow tie on him. That'd be kind of cute. And a little tip I tell people when we're painting, and it's kind of fun, and it might even work for a little um, painting like this, is when you're done, just take a photograph of it with your phone, just a photo, crop it so it's just the painting, and, and just make prints. You can do them on your computer or send them to, you know, printing CBS or wherever you get your prints made. Make a few prints, and then if you just take them and just double-sided tape, put them on like the blank note cards, um, five by seven cards, you can buy a pack of 25 at Michael's Craft Pack, Hobby Lobby, any place you all want to them, I think. And if you just put your little print on there, and you can even write a little title, pencil, or a fine pen underneath, and send it to all your friends. You could use it as a birthday card. You can just use it as a note card. I think um, email's great, but isn't it fun to get a little real happy mail in the mail? And won't you impress everybody with your artwork? It's a great way to share it. It's a great way for Christmas cards and things. But if you want a little spring note to send it off to someone, so simple. Just buy a pack of those cards. You've got 25. And every time you have a painting, painting that you love, you can make a little, you know, a couple little prints and um, make some little cards. It's so cool. You could even do this somehow to you, to, you know, with a photo to turn it into your background or your, your devices or your computer. That would be fun to have some to this your um, Wallpaper on your computer, your own painting. See, see, this one's bright and sunny. This would be nice with tulips. You can make these little flowers tulips too. The, the, you know, use your imagination. The ideas are endless. It's great to take the, something that you're working on as a starting point and then redo it differently. So that looks a little scalloppy. I like these ones here more because they look a little bit lighter on the edge. These are a little bit yellow, and so the blue does show through. So I'm going to lighten up that yellow a little bit, and I'm going to just quickly just give this a little light, kind of like a little scalloped edge. And again, an example of I really kind of worked a little bit too detailed on this side, but when I go back and just do them kind of quickly and fun, I like the look better. And as for painting, if you don't have any questions, let me know. And, and afterwards, certainly I'll make a post to share our paintings. And please do. I'd love to see them. And if you have any questions or any issues and you want a little critique, you're welcome to put it up or send it to me in a message. And it'll help you. Um, Hi, Michelle. Yeah, I do it with some Christmas, I have some Christmas paintings that are very graphic looking. So there's not a lot of little foo foo details. They're pretty graphic. And boy, they make like the cardinal one we did with the birch trees. It makes a fabulous card. The cards are so expensive. You know, it's so nice to make your own because then it's five by seven. The recipient or yourself could just put it in a standard five by seven frame and you've got a cute little gift there too. Sometimes I like to embellish. So I think I want to take that light since I have that light yellow and go to my sun and sort of just make a big spiral there. It just, isn't that fun and whimsy and whimsical? And it's, and it might, I don't know if it's on my original or not. I don't have a great sample here. I love spirals. You see, I put the spiral there. I'm going to put spiral on this guy. Spirals in the middle here. I'm going to take a little orange paint now and just make a little bit of a circle in the middle of these guys. I want it to be a little lighter then. I'm going to mix a little bit of white with that. So we're going to take my little back and mix. So it's a little white. A little white, but I can find some clean white there. In with my. I want it to be a little peacher. A little more peach colored so that when I go with the little spiral in the, in the middle after that, it's going to be uh, the orange will show up. So there we go. So it's, it seems like a little peach color. And again, it's a case of where I don't mix the two colors perfectly together on my palette and come over here. You can see I did it so that it is um, this way. Uh, a little dark orange and a little white. 
And, and I, I think, think that just makes it interesting. It that makes more painterly painting. I think it's more fun to look at something like that. So just do some circles inside the original style there. there. That, that one's much lighter. It doesn't matter. But if you want to, just pull it a little bit darker on your brush as you go. There, there might be cases when we need to mix up certain colors and have a good bit of it so it's the same. But um, lots, lots of times, times we just, like I said, I do it on the fly. And you can see that. Anyone else with painting anything interesting and fun? What are you guys working on? What do you want to work on? Um, yeah, Katie, yeah, don't worry, because you can actually, it's a fun technique for the clouds. Come back later and play around because you can put more in and super duper light. Just take your brush and just put a little white, tiny bit, go onto your canvas, and you can maybe not even hardly see them, but that's okay. Get a little place for them and just a little more paint and go back. It'll be it'll be easy peasy, I promise you. My little face is still wet, so I don't want to put my eyes in and wait till you see how super simple the eyes are. Really easy. While I'm waiting, my lips are pretty dry. I think I'll go back in and just put some little grasses. I think I want more of a lime green, kind of, so I'm going to mix up more yellow to my green. And a good bit of white again, because I do want it to show up. And again, sometimes I don't know even if that's going to work until I actually put it on the canvas, and then I adjust. I just don't want to have my little limbs like, just so, you know, solid there. I want to put some little grasses. I like sand in there. And you can see I did a few little grass strokes. I find the paint was a little thick. So what I'm doing is just adding a few drops of water to my brush, and uh, that way it'll kind of flow a little easier for me. There. And now's the time you can look, and if you want them anywhere else, you can go ahead. What I'm going to show you is a little extra detail if you would like, just because um, some little daisies scattered in maybe around here and there, and leaving my space to write Happy Spring. But I just want to show you the technique if you want to learn to make a little flower. It's so easy. I'm going to use a little flat, flat, tiny brush. Can you see that little brush? You could use a round, but if you have a little flat, it does do a nice job. And all I'm doing is loading some white paint on there. And again, I always dab a little off. And here's a little technique to make some little flowers, which are cool. I just press and pull. Press and pull. I always go from the outside edge to the center. And it makes a little flower. And put the center in white, and I'll tell you why. Because we'll need to cover that, that green with yellow, so I always do the center in white as well. Sometimes it can just be like a little half of a flower peeking out. I'm just going to do them in the four corners. So I'm just going to do a couple little... Uh, and those could be used anywhere. You could have put them along here, put little stems to them. But again, it's just press that brush down and pull it in. You're pressing it and you're pulling it and pulling up a little. So you can get a little petal shape with just one stroke. And again, you use your little bits and pieces there, just like they're peeking out from behind something. I'm going to make like a little frame for my writing. I was going to tell you to put the centers in white. Yeah, put the centers in white because they're going to cover with your, your yellow will cover a little bit when it's dry. Uh, so, so, so I just add some little, um, little flowers. They're not much, but they're just a little something. Give that a minute to dry, and we'll put our little yellow centers in. And in the meantime, now is when I'm going to take my little, my little round brush again. It could be smaller than this. It could be bigger. Actually, this little one. Okay. And now this time I'm just taking the straight orange, but again, it's been sitting out, even just a little time we've been painting, it's gotten a little thick. I'm going to add a little bit, a few drops of water in there, and a little spiral shape inside my flower. It's not jumping out at you, but it adds a little bit of fun. So can you see that? Oops, there. And I'm going to reload my brush each time, because I want... It just show up nicely, and if I went from the flower to flower without reloading, it would get a little, uh, a little too, too light on the paint. So I'm going to try to tip it so you can see. So I just plant my brush down and then spot it out. And they're very whimsical. They don't look much like real daffodils, but they're fun. And they can go right all over that little peach area you, you, 
you paint it. You don't have to be careful and stick right inside. Just kind of do a little spiral. Very similar to the Tree of Life, um, the little flowery bits on the Tree of Life. Did anybody ever paint the Tree of Life with me? We did these little circles with spirals on them to, to um, decorate the tree. Press it down. Yeah. So you can kind of see. Just kind of fun. Now I think it's good enough time to take that little brush that we just had with the yellow on it and just give our little centers a yellow, a little, our little flowers and a little yellow center. It's really not much. Just pop a little yellow in there. Okay, cool. All right. And now you can go back. You, you can step away from your painting, reevaluate. If you're looking at it and, oh, your sun is not bright enough, then just do more yellow, more Highlights on your clouds if you want. You can always go back. The acrylic painting is great because you can go back and fix everything, adjust things, change things. Um, he does need eyes. And I find the simplest way is to take the back end of one of my brushes to use just to make dots. I'm going to do white dots and then let's try to put little yellow, little black dots in his eyes. So I just take going to like the biggest bit of white paint that I have. I just Dip, dip the back end of your brush in and just dot on his eyes. Perfect little circles without even trying. So can you see? And if you want little dots on something, back end of a small brush, it's great for decorating. You put a scarf on it on the neck or any little thing you want to decorate with little dots, just use the back end. Like you can get a really thin brush, a uh, thin end, and it will make nice little tiny dots for you. I did get a little black on my canvas there, which is not a big deal. It probably has dried, so I could paint over it. But a little tip, um, alcohol removes the dried paint. So if you went over with a little alcohol, that would take that right off. Or you had paint someplace where it shouldn't be, a little alcohol would take off that dried curly paint. Because I know once it's on there sometimes, it's on there. It's on there good. So there you go. Okay. Hey, Patty. Glad you're here. We're painting our little sheep, and uh, it's pretty simple and fun and bright and cheery. I can't really do my eyes until that dries, so I think I'm going to write Happy Spring here. I don't have my chalk handy because, like I said, I scooted it into a different room to paint um, last minute, but I'm going to just kind of eyeball it and do it on the fly. When you want to do some lettering, again, if I had a white Posca marker here with me, you could just do it. With a nice hand writing just with the marker. It's fabulous. I want to do it white though, I don't want to use black. So I'm going to paint it on. And I just make sure my paint is again thinned down a tiny bit. I'm just going to use white. If I have enough on my palette here, at least I can start it. I'm just going to scoop it out between these curls. And then we're going to do our decorative bits on our hand too. So um, I'm just going to scoot out a little bit of white here. And I'm going to add some water because I want it to be thinned down a bit. Now, I am going to just go ahead and just letter this on. My lettering is okay, it's not great. My handwriting couldn't read, so this is better than that. But let's just put a little head spring in there. And they're pretty much the same size words, so let's see what I'm going to do. I'm just going to. I do have a little bit of lettering that I kind of like, and I'll show you why. You don't have to be perfect. I make the letters random sizes so that they're not all perfect. It doesn't matter if I didn't mean it to be. So, so I can make a big H, a little A. I can make a big P. And a little one. But you kind of have to add more paint letters because I really want to show off. So I'm going to try to be better with my brush. But if you make it a little wonky on purpose, you don't have to worry about being perfect, right? There, there's my happy. And another tip for doing lettering on your painting, if you really want um, to have it just so, then go into one of your pages or one of your Word document uh, on your computer, one of your um, applications to do that, and get the font you like. Get the size you like and just print it out and then from the printed piece you can trace it onto your onto your uh, canvas and i don't know if you've watched some of my little tutorials on tracing things on i just print out my design 
And this is a Sorel transfer paper that you can use. But it's very simple, really, to just take the back side of your tracing, use your pencil with the graphite, and just trace over the lines and flip it over and transfer it on. So you don't need anything fancy. If you have carbon paper or transfer paper, great. But if you want, just flip it over and use graphite. So you could print out whatever letter you want, transfer it on, and have it you know much nicer and, and, and uh, more even than this. Um, hi, Michelle. Let's see. This is the very beginning. Michelle, I did it this time. I, I do that a lot of times, and we did that when we did that other sheet painting. This guy, I did not. I just painted him white. And I'm going to add some detail on top of the white. So sometimes I use that dark underpainting to kind of give it the texture and the dimension. But we're doing it a little different today because I'm using more whimsical, glass spirals, kind of fun look. So in a minute, we'll put those spirals on. Um, but you, if you did do a gray or purple, you certainly really can because that's the technique that we used before. And, and anything goes, and I want to teach you techniques, but I want you to be able to mix and match and use them any way you like. All right, so we got happy, and now we'll just bring it. First letters of the words I want them fairly big. But then I'm just going to play around with the rest. And again, put my paint thin down. I'm reloading after each letter. And I'm just varying sizes. And if you like this look, great. If you don't care for it, you can do any letter you want. And again, I think the Posca paint markers, whatever brand Posca is good with the other brands, um, I think that's a great idea too. Happy Square. Let's get this last one. So there. Now, if you want to go back when it's dry, because it, the paint has sunk into the background a little bit, it's not as bright as you'd like, you can certainly just go right over it. I, I like it that way, a little more subtle, kind of not jumping out too much, but that's that. You will see on your eyes that paint is really thick when we dabbed it on, so that's still wet. Let it dry a little bit. Um, and then we're going to do these little spirals on here. You could go with different colors. You could use a gray or a purple or a blue for the little spirals. I like this gold color, this ochre color. I use that a lot in a lot of things. I'm going to pull this side and really thin it down because, look, it's really thick now. It's been sitting on my palette. we have been going all almost an hour and so it does thicken up a little bit so just thin it down i have a feeling it's going to be too dark so i'm going to add a little white to it i want to see the spirals on the shape's body but i don't want it to be just looking at spirals so you can see i've sort of just made it a little bit lighter and i'm going to take it away i just want the um i just want it to be a nice thin ink white consistency i'm going to take this little bit small round brush now and I don't want to put my hand in what I just wrote, the happy spring. So I'm going to just turn this little guy upside down. And spirals, again, we don't have to be perfect. They're just going to be fun. Take a little bit. I always start in the middle, press down, and I spiral around. That is a little bright. It's a little brighter than my sample, I think. But I like it, so I'm going to keep it. But you can vary it. You could add more white to it. But you can see the nice thin, maybe you can't, but it's a nice thin paint, so it was just like ink, and it went so nice and smooth. If you tried it just um, a little bit dried up, the way it's been sitting on my palette, it would drag. You wouldn't get a nice spiral. So that's, well, that's why it's a good idea to always, any detail, add a little bit water. And each time I go back in, I dip into a little bit more water. And let's just vary the color a little bit. You can see what whatever you like. They could all be different shades. And what I tend to do is when I'm doing this little spiral pattern, I started here and went, to the left. Now I'm going to start here, go to the right. That does not matter at all. I just like to make them a little different. So sometimes I start one way, other times I start another way. Sometimes I do really teeny ones. Sometimes I do big ones. This is just a decorative pattern. It's just for fun. And you can see, just give it a little interest to him. But if you want it to be really, really super light and barely seen, that's fine. You know, just kind of just do them that way. Go out, out to your edge. If, if they only a little half of a little bit of a spiral, that's okay. I'm, I'm not, not thinking about it too much. I'm not planning. Can you see? I'm just kind of covering anything that's white with, with these little lines. lines. Sometimes it can just be a little sea stroke. It doesn't have to be the whole spiral. This, this one is going to bug me now because it's just a little bit dark. So I'm not going to lighten that up a bit. Just so it blends up a little bit there. 
and I'm barely looking at my paint when I dip into it. So sometimes I get into a little bit of a goldy color, sometimes not. Sometimes we're right here. So, what do you think? Do you guys like the spirals? You could certainly be just left white. He could, could be, be done with white and then this color just as little sea strokes all along like that if you like that instead. It's what whatever you like. So take the, take the ideas, take the designs, and do what, what you'd like with them. So much fun for us after the class is to look at all cool paintings everybody's done. So do be sure to share them. We're almost ready to wrap it up. We're going to do the eyes. I told you I'm going to put glasses on my eyes this time. Just for fun. Can you see? I'm not really being too particular. I'm just kind of putting those little guys on there. Some I'm can overlap. There. Yeah. A little yeah. back. So blank with no eye muscles in there. But there you have it. There's that. Let me see if I get those eyes in there. Let's see. It's a little bit. Let me try. Maybe not let it dry. So here's, here's the case, case where you would go for a smaller brush. So again, we're going to just use the back end to dip it in some black. I do take the black paint right from the palette because it's okay. It's a little it's almost better. I don't I don't uh, water down the uh, when I'm taking the back end of the brush just to make some little circles. Yeah, I can see now. He has sight. That one was a little wet, so you can see how it came out a little wonky. We'll fix that as we go. Oh, oh gosh, she's looking a little more fell than me. Look at he's looking off the other way. We gotta fix that. <laughs> we don't want. We, we, we love Marty Feldman, but we don't want this poor little guy to have crazy eyes. And again, because it's acrylic, and we can just go back and fix any little thing we need to. And I'm going to give him some glasses too afterwards. So let me just fix his eye a little bit, let it dry. So when it's dry, it's a little easier to, to uh, take care of. He's looking better. Oh, he's upside down. He's looking better. Not as Marty Feldman. -ish. So where's everybody with their painting? Are you keeping up a little bit? Are you need some more time? Do you have any questions? Please just throw them in there. Even if you're watching this on the replay, I'm going to watch it. So. Throw your comments in and I will still answer them even after the class is over. So that's what's good about. I do this live, you guys can pop in and we can chat, but um, the class will be out there and you can watch it anytime. I'm going to touch up this little bit of blue. It's got a little yellow on it, a little smooch of yellow on there. So let's just touch that up. Okay, there. It's pretty easy peasy to fix things. Yep. All right. I think we're good. We're going to maybe give them glasses. You guys don't have to. I have no idea what it's going to look like, but let's just try it. Yeah, white paint's kind of one you need. So you can mix a lot of colors, but so I hope your white paint gets there soon. That'd be great. Yeah. And what color? I don't have my red paint here, so we're going to just, let's see. Color glasses. I think because of the black face, we're going to have to do it white first. So I'm going to get some white over the black. And then maybe the orange glasses because that will be cute with the orange bits in the middle of flower. So I'm kind of swinging it now. I think we've just done really with the painting. Don't no, forget you can sign. And I use the sign bottom right. You could do initials, you could do your signature. Um, you could use a little use a little sharpie, sharpie, sharpie you like. Whatever you, Every you, like. you could always sign on the back that day just so you remember when you did it. And if the kids are painting, it's always fun to put let them write a little something on the back and date it, and then you, every year we put it out for spring or Easter, and you have that little memory. Spiral in is this spiral hand. Yeah, that's fabulous, Michelle. I love that. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> we have so much fun, don't we? Okay, glasses on, my guys. I don't know. I should take my glasses off and look at them. What they look like, but I'm just gonna wait. And I've been wanting to. Glasses and scarves and decorative things on my animals lately. So I, I have some ideas I'll be working on. Speaking of which, what, is everyone ready to paint summer yet? Yeah, I know we're just doing spring, but I'm really ready for summer. Any thoughts or suggestions for paintings? Let me know. I have some wave paintings we're going to do. I put those out a while ago and people voted, but I think we might just do them all. They're just little squares. It's just like almost practice for painting waves. That would be so fun. I'm ready to go to the beach, paint waves. All, All right. right, he's looking a little goofy, but let that white dry and we'll give him little orange glasses. You, you can put hats on here, you guys, a little spring bonnet, Easter bonnet, 
anything. You could put, how's I even how cute with this? Like real high heel shoes, really? Dead glitter? So many ideas. All right, so let's let this dry. And I think I know I'm gonna surprise a little bit, but like again, yeah, again, just send me a message at time. We can always, um, we can always address any questions you have later. I just want to do this little fun spring painting with everyone. Just seeing like a week appropriate after the long winter weather we had. You can go right over your little glasses with any color. I'm doing orange. And I'll upload this class after to YouTube again. It'll be on the Facebook, but sometimes it's easier to find on YouTube. So do look for me on YouTube and follow me. If you put on the alerts there, you'll see me um, there live as well. If you're on Facebook and you see that little bell on the lower left for alerts, then you'll see me whenever I go live. And let's just do this. And I really want to fun painting with you guys. What do you think? He's got a lot of glasses now. Something different, different, right? Anyhow, I am happy to spend some time uh, with you guys today. Thank you. Puffins. Yeah, did you want to see that last night? Because I yeah. made a lot. We have puffins way up there. And I love the puffins, so that would be fun. Um, yeah. yeah, so I'm going to work some things. If you have any ideas, pictures, and whatnot, send, send them my way. way. Thank you guys so much for turning up today and painting with me. And I will see you next time. I have to get to my classes. We're pretty much done with my schedule I have. So I'm going to go ahead this week and, and get some new classes up for you. And uh, as usual, we just sign up and get the supply list and the tracing. But again, always feel free to jump in and paint because I can walk you through the supplies down fly and we can uh, all stretch on the signs and whatnot. No, but okay, okay. happy spring. Have, Have a great, great Sunday, you guys. And thanks again. And I will talk to you all soon. Okay, bye now.